I just want to take a moment to talk a little bit about weddings in general in 2020. Uh, so I'll be honest, I've heard for real that a lot of people that have been infected got exposed at a wedding. I, I honestly think this is just going to be a calculated risk and one of the risks that we take. Okay, so if you were to guess, what do you think are the main reasons people are traveling this summer? To get out of their house. I don't know. I mean, I think people people like to hit national parks, so... There we go. Here's my guesses. Number one, national parks. Number two, weddings. So we're just gonna hit both right now? We are gonna do both at the exact same time at Glacier National Park with literally a wedding inside of the park. Huh. All eastside roads and the park remain closed. Thank you for calling National Park. In terms of national parks, COVID issue number one at Glacier National Park specifically, even though there are no requirements for reservations and there are no closures of the entire park or facilities, the east part of the park is totally closed for road access. And it's really important that you know that because if you screw up and you and you arrive in the Blackfoot Reservation on the east side of the park, you're gonna get turned away and it takes more than five hours to drive all the way around the south end of the park to get to the west entrance, so. Yeah, and the interesting thing is Google Maps is usually pretty good about, hey, are roads closed? That actually it totally still, floored me. It still shows it as being open. All right, well, all right. as far as the wedding goes, to tell you the truth, I've heard of a lot of people getting infected just by weddings. <laughs> and I think we probably both don't really know how it's going to work. Yeah. And what exactly we're gonna do to stay safe, but it's our job to be respectful and to be there for the wedding and to be around family and also to be as responsible as possible. I think we'll probably just have to figure it out and, um, you know, be respectful to everybody and ourselves along the way, so. Or what I don't know, Matthew, is if we're actually staying with my parents in their wedding arranged accommodations or if we're actually just camping in the driveway. driveway. Either know. will work. Hello? Are we Hello? staying in your house or in your driveway? Okay, so we found out that the place my parents are staying at for the wedding is like a one person kind of cabin and we got like five people. So six, <laughs> eight, six yeah. <laughs> so no worries, we're just gonna use our old school tips. And we're gonna use public land to just camp a place that's like 11 minutes away just to reduce stress from the whole kind of wedding scene. So it'll be easier for everybody. We are going down to a camp, Ooh. yeah, literally just. <laughs> Uh, we are going down to a uh, campsite along a river. Found it on iOverlander. There's a lot of people coming out of here. Yeah, this is like a pretty, look like a busy area. Yeah, we can definitely. Look at that. Huh. Well, you want to get down in there? Yeah. This is pretty cool. This is like a giant party down by the river. Good lord, this is busy. <laughs> Don't run over the cornhole. Yeah. Normally I like to be pretty private when we're camping, but this is pretty dang cool. It's like this huge camping fest on the riverbank. That place was one of those like rare moments of hippie paradise. But it's almost go time for the wedding, so we gotta go scrub the hippie campsite off of ourselves. <laughs> okay, so before it's show time, I just want to take a moment to talk a little bit about weddings in general in 2020. 
Here's the thing, I wouldn't have missed this wedding for anything. That being said, I do know that most of the attendees are my family or close family members of the bride and groom that are here in good faith, believing that they're not sick. I also know that several family members were actually tested negative before they arrived. But uh, we'll do our part to be as safe as possible. I, I honestly think this is just going to be a calculated risk and one of the risks that we take. So I'm not concerned about it, but we'll see how it goes. Happy Sunday. We're just kind of detoxing a little bit and relaxing after the wedding last night, which by the way, it was a wedding, you know, and the bride and groom did have special accommodations like masks and that, you know, that sort of thing available, but it was a wedding and it happened like a normal wedding happens. And it was honestly really refreshing, just kind of feeling human again and doing things like that. But as I mentioned, I think that was just kind of a, one of the risks that we take, um, and it was probably the right risk to take just to be around family and to enjoy that moment, so. Okay, so we've been in Montana now for a few days, but with wedding goings on, we actually haven't been inside Glacier Park at all yet. And we've heard not really horror stories, but definitely a lot of traffic stories in the park. It'll be interesting to see now that it's Sunday if it's calming down at all. We also waited till the afternoon just to try to miss some of the morning hike crowds and that sort of thing. So, what do you think? Hi there. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you're set. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. You too. Honestly, that was like painless. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that bad. It was. It was weird though that I haven't seen any national parks this busy. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the main road through Glacier is called the Going to the, Going to the Sun Road. Yeah. And it's open. It's closed at the east end though, like we've been talking about. Glacier is also famous for its historical red buses that run up and down this road. The red buses, I think, are a private company and they're just closed for the 2020 season, so. All right, here comes the scenery. Yeah. a lot of people out here but it doesn't seem like we're like right on top of anybody you know it's like plenty of space yeah I mean the nice thing is this, this is a trailhead for two spots so you can either do Hidden Lake or do Highline that way six feet buddy Well, that was a nice boutique hike. Yeah, it always is. It's pretty and it's easy. It's like, hey, I've got a couple hours to spend at the park. Besides doing the drive, just go do that. Uh, dumb comment of the day, but this place is huge. You know? Sure? Yeah. It's like, holy crap. It's like, yeah, there's one major road through here. Granted, it's closed in one end, and that's just one like little sliver, but everything is just jaw dropping, you know? Yeah, I mean, you have like six entrances total, I think, when it's all open. So, and then the entrance on the northeast side uh, ties in with Canada. So, yeah, you know. not this time. Huh. Today we're going to do something that is not really allowed almost at all in a COVID world. Recreation or non-essential travel is not allowed. I think we might actually be able to put a foot in Canada. 